Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about wedges. So a wedge is a thin wedge-shaped object that is forced between two other objects in order to separate them. So here we've got a wedge that is being driven into a piece of firewood to split the firewood. Uh, so we have a pushing force, which would in this case be exerted by a hammer, uh, and the wedge can cause huge normal forces separating the two bodies uh, with a relatively small pushing force. Um, so we have very large normal forces, uh, and the main force that we need to overcome, though, is the friction that exists between the bodies and the wedge, or body or bodies and the wedge. All right, so how do we analyze these wedge problems then? Um, well, these are more or less equilibrium problems. So we're gonna treat it like it's an equilibrium or at least quasi-equilibrium. So we can use sum of forces in the X and sum of forces in the Y uh, is equal to zero. So step one in our equilibrium analysis is always to draw a free body diagram. Uh, in this case, the free body diagram of the wedge uh, and or the body or bodies being moved by the wedge. And we wanna to remember to include the pushing force on the wedge, uh, the normal forces that are always gonna act perpendicular to the surfaces in contact, uh, and the friction forces, which are always gonna be opposing potential sliding. Uh, so we're generally gonna assume sliding or in some cases impending motion in these situations. So step number two, once we have our free body diagrams, is always to write out the equilibrium equations, uh, and the wedge and the bodies are assumed to be in equilibrium. Uh, and then finally, uh, so we're gonna use the coefficient of frictions to relate the normal forces and friction forces. This is gonna make it our analysis simpler. We're gonna talk about this more in a second. And step three in these problems is always to solve our equilibrium equations for unknown values. So this could be normal forces, this could be the pushing force, this could be the um, friction forces at play. All right, so for this, we're gonna use an example. So imagine we've got a heavy safe pressed snugly up against a wall. Uh, and so in order to move the safe out from the wall, we place a steel wedge, as shown below, between the wall and the safe, and we push down on the wedge to get a little bit of space between the wall and the safe. So what force is needed to move the safe? Well, this is a wedge problem here. All right, so step number one is always setting up the free body diagrams. So uh, I've got my wedge and my uh, safe, so not necessarily the size here and we draw our free body diagram. We have the pushing force uh, on the wedge, um, and we're gonna assume neg negligible weight for that. Uh, the safe, however, is gonna have a significant weight force. We're also gonna have normal forces wherever we have contact. So Fn1 is between the wedge and the wall. Fn2 is between the wedge and the safe, and you'll notice that this is a Newton's third law pair, which means we've got a set of equal and opposite forces and then Fn3 is between the safe and the floor. So wherever we have a normal force, we're also gonna have the potential, at least, for a friction force. So I've got the friction force one goes with Fn1, friction force two goes with Fn2, uh, and friction force three goes with Fn3. So to simplify analysis, uh, in these wedge problems, we're often gonna replace the friction force with simply the coefficient of friction times the corresponding normal force. And depending on how you wanna set this up, this can either be the kinetic coefficient of friction, uh, if we are kind of moving, keeping things moving, uh, or it could be the static coefficient of friction if we wanna know what is the force required to get things started. All right, so if we assume a uh, static or and or kinetic coefficient of friction of 0.15 for all surfaces, we'd replace our friction forces with 0.15 times Fn1, 0.15 times Fn2, and 0.15 times Fn3. So in this case, we've gone from uh, three unknown normal forces and three unknown friction forces to just three unknown normal forces. Uh, this is usually gonna be necessary to make the problem solvable. All right, so once we have our free body diagrams, we move on to the equations. So with the simplified diagrams, we're gonna assume that each body's in equilibrium uh, and generally, we're gonna ignore the moment equations for these wedge problems. Uh, as the wedge gets moved in there, the moment equation, uh, the forces are gonna shift and the moment's gonna shift. Uh, so we stick to forces in the X and forces in the Y is generally safer. So for the wedge, we have a sum of forces in the X and sum of forces in the Y. Uh, 
for the safe, in this case, we also have sum of forces in the x and sum of forces in the y. So two separate bodies, two equations for each. That would let us solve for up to four unknowns. So in this case, uh, if I know the, assuming I know the weight of the safe, um, I have a normal force three, two, and one. So three different normal forces and the pushing force. So I have exactly enough equations to solve for the four unknowns, the pushing force, and the three normal forces. So for solving the equations, once you have your equilibrium equations set up, you just have to solve them like you would for any other equilibrium problem. Uh, just make sure you have enough equations to solve for all the unknowns. Like I said, it's often going to be necessary to use the coefficients of friction times the normal force in place of your friction force unknowns. So we also want to remember to apply Newton's third law in multi-body problems. For the safe and the wedge, we had that Fn2, which was a set of equal and opposite forces. It's only one unknown, uh, although it shows up on both diagrams. All right, that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.